Hey guys, Ash here from Escape Studios. Today I'm going to show you a little trick to help get rid of tracking markers in Nuke. It comes from Michael, one of our studio assistants. Okay, so this technique I'm going to show you is really good for removing tracking markers. I'm going to use it to remove a whole window from this building. That's just because I want to make the technique really clear. Essentially, what I'm going to do is something very similar to the clone tool in Photoshop. I'm going to select another part of the building to replace the window with. So I'm going to replace the window with the piece of wall next to it. I'm going to track it in so that it moves with the movement of the shot. So the first thing I need is a tracker. So I'll tab, track. I'll move my tracking marker up to the window, make sure it's in the center, click track to the end of the sequence, it'll go through all 100 frames, and yet the little tracking marker stays in the middle of the window for the whole sequence, that's great. I'm just going to tidy up my tree. Now the next node I need is a roto node. Now what you want to do with a roto node, I'll uh, zoom in, make sure I've got Bezier selected. I'm going to roto what I want to remove. So in this case, I'm going to roto the window. You might roto your tracking marker or whatever else is in your scene that you're looking to get rid of. So I'm just going to draw a circle around this circular window. It's not very tidy, but it doesn't need to be for this example. Also, I'm just going to add a blur node just so that we don't get a sharp edge. I'll add a bit of feather as well. So let's unhook the roto from the background and unhook the tracker from the background and plug it into the bottom of the blur. Now double click the tracker node and go over to transform and select match move from the drop down menu. To finish this off, I need a transform node and a key mix node. Now for the key mix, you plug the A into the transform, you plug B into the original sequence and you plug mask into tracker. Now let's have a look at this key mix node. Now there is a problem here. That big black circle should be on top of my window, but it's not. It's off and slightly up to the left. Now that's happened because I'm on frame six instead of frame one. If we have a look in the tracking node, you'll see that the reference frame for the match move is set at frame one, but I did my roto on frame six. So I need to put frame six in here. I'll press enter and then there we go. The roto is now over the window where it should be. Okay, so we're looking at the key mix node. The problem we've got is that A isn't plugged into anything. So I'm gonna plug the transform back into the original sequence. At the moment, everything looks the same, but if I double click on the transform node and let's put 10 in the translate X, ah, the window has moved over, so it seems. What you're doing with this is you're essentially taking another part of the backplate and transforming it over into your roto. If I give you a more extreme example, if I put 100 in the translate X, you'll see that essentially another version of the backplate has been moved over 100 units, and what we're now getting is we're getting the building in the background replacing the window. So what you need to do is use the transform node to find another piece of your backplate which you can replace your marker with. So if you were replacing a marker on a green screen, you'd simply move the translate node until it was showing a piece of flat green, and then your marker would be removed. For me, I'm trying to remove my window, so I want to take a piece of the wall from next to the window and clone it. I'll do that. Let's try halfway between there. Let's try 50. 50 is pretty good, but I've got a little bit of that corner brick there. So I'll now change it to 45. So instead of showing my window, this now shows the piece of wall 45 nuke units over. And because we've plugged a tracker node in, if I click play, it's going to move in correspondence to the track. So for this entire sequence, that piece of wall to the left of the window is going to replace the window. Now this is obviously a simple example. If you were doing a more complicated marker, you may have to take different bits of the environment. For that, you'd have to use a couple more rotors. You'd have to repeat this process for smaller parts of your marker. But essentially, it's always the same. You're just taking another piece of your plate and replacing what's inside the roto with it. So clearly, for something simple like this, this is a real quick and easy way. You don't have to do any painting out, no kind of keying just a simple roto circle and my entire window has disappeared. A very, very powerful technique. So thanks a lot to Michael for that awesome tip. And remember, if you guys have any tips or tricks you want to share with the VFX world, feel free to drop me an email, tell me all about them, and I'll make a video out of them. Also, don't forget the first two weeks of November is the VFX Festival, both here at Escape Studios and at the View in Leicester Square. We've got awesome screenings, industry panel debates, recruitment talks, and workshops going to be really really cool we've got a lot of stuff going on tickets are selling out fast so click on the link now to make sure you get yours and hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks thanks a lot for watching guys hit subscribe now and we'll see you next week